Hey there, this is Brandon, and this will be my chart view for Tuesday, December 22nd. Um, back at it today after the uh, my long weekend, <clears throat> and um, I'm actually off work tonight as well, so I'm uh, I'll be able to record this video without any interruptions. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day off. Um, so anyway, uh, price action today uh, to me looked like a nice. Um, well, it, it it started out as a trading range, uh, especially you know the the boundaries of the trading range were a, a lot larger in here, and then it shrunk down and got even tighter. Uh, had about a six point range in here um, and I really thought this would turn out to be a failed break above the trading range and we'd, we'd break down and, and go lower um, but uh, of course you can never <laughs> try to never I, I can't never <laughs> I can never try to think that I know what the market's going to do because anytime I try to predict what the market's going to do it usually doesn't work out well if I try to trade that those uh, predictions um, so definitely continue to learn that the best way to do this is to trade what I see and wait for the setups to happen and actually trigger uh, don't try to sneak in all the rest of it but uh, anyway it, it seemed like just a regular old trading range in here <clears throat> and and then um, and then once we broke higher it looked like it was kind of going to come right back in into the trading range but uh, it ended up establishing this this trend here uh, on a bigger picture this two-tiered channel seems to fit nicely along the lows here and then along these four highs um, and you know there was some date debate in here around the midline um, so um, but uh, you know as as usual I I was trading and making my decisions based on the short-term channels and and setups from those so without any further ado let's talk about the trades <clears throat> first trade I marked was a failed second entry short um, had this overnight low and a clear reversal type pattern um, nice nice uh, bullish trend there uh, and a little channel and you get a break here and it makes two legs to a new high um, but I like the uh, the failed here's the first entry short pullback second entry short looks like it probably would have worked if you go short with a stop right there at 88 or 18 and a quarter um, yeah plenty of room to get a four four tick scalp um, but still I think you can treat that as a failed second entry short um, pulls right back here to the EMA so it uh, reverses through the EMA comes back and makes everybody out here heads higher again and so by this by this time you know the reversal is the real deal and so I like uh, just going along with a stop right above that bar with a failed second entry short uh, quick trade <clears throat> and then I didn't I didn't have this channel drawn in here until much later uh, which is why I ended up going short right here instead of long um, but I, I really if I had if I had had that line drawn just like that and you can see how well that fits um, and then drag it down here and it does punch through that a little bit but not for long um, you know within a couple of ticks it, it was back up inside the channel so uh, but anyway after this trade it hits the high over here and starts heading down there's a uh, there's a second entry short right there uh, not not technically it's not because it never it never uh, had a higher low in here um, but you can see it pushed down came back up pushed down actually that's kind of like a failed second entry long almost from the high it went down and back up went down again went back up again so that's a second attempt to go higher and it fails um, so 
you know, I, I think, uh, and you've had the break and two legs to a new high. Um, so I think it might be uh, an aggressive type trade, but I'm going to go ahead and mark that <clears throat> right here. Uh, and then we have another clear reversal pattern here. Um, breaks right through the EMA. I started trading, I think, around um, 10 till 6 or something like that. So I, I obviously missed that trade, um, and I didn't, I didn't take that trade either. That was right near the open as well. So it's always a little, you know, prices are moving quickly. It's always a little tricky for me to take trades right at the opening bell. Um, but this is a pretty clear reversal pattern. Um, and then I liked going short right here. It is a first entry counting from the low here. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, if you didn't go short there, then this is, this is your technical second entry because notice the low is a little bit higher than the previous low. So there's a little bit of a uh, there's a second entry right there, um, and that, that works out to be a nice trade. So between this hidden failed second entry long or this second entry short, um, I think one of those places would have, would have been a good place to go short um, and a pretty good setup. But again, I just missed it. <clears throat> um, but you have at least one, maybe two attempts to go higher in here, and then it reverses. And then look how it comes back up here. It tries to go higher a second or third time, depending on how you're looking at it in this area. Uh, but that's an attempt to go higher. It, it doesn't notice it closes inside this trend line, uh, which you can just draw. I had this drawn right off of those first two swings, um, right off of the high and right off of that close there. Um, and this is... This is clear rejection. It's clearly going lower here. It's big bullish, a bearish bar, um, and it's you know it's establishing the EMA as resistance because it's such a large bar. Um, I think the way to trade this would be to use a limit order to try to come back in here, uh, either you know at a minimum right here a tick below this bar. Um, but maybe even right at the low or maybe even a tick into that, and you can see you would have gotten filled right there. Um, just because you want to have your stop, I would want to have my stop at least a tick above that, so 19 and a, uh, and a quarter, which means I'm trying to go short at 17 and a quarter, uh, which, you know, technically I would have been, I would not have been filled if I was trying to go short in that area would have come back over here and filled me. And I do believe I had a, a, a limit sell order in here at, at least at one point. Um, and I think I might have canceled that after we saw this because I didn't want to be late to the party. Um, and I thought, you know, I thought we, it's possible we've had a break here and a new low. Um, but I think, you know, in hindsight, this is the first break and here's the new low of this channel working out. Um, so you can see here I drew the line there's some matching lows in this area and then you have a break lower and it pulls back and tests that EMA again um, and gives you that big bearish bar um, so I like pulling short right there um, and I missed it also. Again I think I was trying to get short with a limit order and um, it just never came back high enough to fill me. I didn't, these were some large bars, obviously, and so I like to try to stick to the eight tick uh, stop loss, at least one tick higher than the high of these bars. So that one, 17.75. So I need 15.75, and you can see it didn't, it didn't come back. <clears throat> um, notice the low in here and um, this high here is higher than this high so I was thinking of this as a, a new swing high and you get a first entry short pulls back and here's a second entry short kind of like this one up here but the problem with this second entry short now is you're way below the EMA and it's it's clearly a range 
And so, again, that's one of the things that I've had to learn the hard way, and it's, it's ingrained in me now, uh, is that I, on a range day, I'm looking for chances. I'm looking for setups to go short above the EMA, and then when, when we come down here below the EMA, I'm, I'm more in the mood, you know, I'm more looking for setups to go long on a trading range day. If it's a big trend, then, then you know, it's a different strategy. <clears throat> um, so when, when we had this second entry short here, um, it did go four ticks, right? 1275, 1150. Just barely it went, it went the requisite four ticks to get a scalp there. Um, but, you know, I was not about to take a second entry short way down here below the EMA, especially where we've had that bounce right here. I'm not going to go short right into that um, support area. Um, and so when, when prices couldn't go any lower than that and they actually ticked higher in here, I actually did, I mean, it's a bit of a, it's definitely an aggressive trade, um, but I figured it would be good for a trip back here to the EMA, which it was. And I wasn't even going for that many ticks. I was just going for my standard four ticks. So once it ticked higher here and this this uh, second entry short failed, which the trigger for that is when prices ticked higher than this previous high, um, then I used a limit order uh, to go long right here. And it went against me. Um, and uh, then came up here and gave me a, a nice kind of miracle fill right there and came down and closed all the way down here, um, which even if I hadn't gotten that miracle fill there, I would have been filled right here because my stop was one tick below this low. Um, and you can see that never, that never got hit. Um, so I, I think it's definitely aggressive. It's a first entry. Um, and by the time you have a second entry, it's too close in here to the EMA. Um, and so I don't like going long right there, uh, even though it looks like a trap. Um, and instead, I ended up taking the failed second entry long as a short trade. I, I used that to trigger a short trade. Now, um, how did I do this? Well... Once, here's your second entry long, and once prices ticked one tick below this low, that triggered the failed second entry long. Um, but I didn't really want to go short down here um, because it, it had bounced right there, and that was four ticks. Uh, so I wanted to give myself a little bit more room to where it seemed like there was some support and some buying coming in. Um, so I, I actually waited for it to go back a couple of ticks, um, and I just used the limit order to get short. It went two ticks against me and then came down here and gave me the scalp. So I like this failed second entry short. Notice also what's happening here is that I was treating this kind of like a spike in channel, uh, where it spiked down and then it kind of flattened out here. And you can see that... I think there were some other traders that were seeing that because uh, it was reacting off the lows here and it's reacting off those highs. Um, and that was a pretty decent move. But then the, the support came into play again. Um, and so, and the other thing I was looking for was the measured move. Notice the swing down right there. And then we had a little correction. And so I was looking for it to come back here. Um, and that's interesting as well because. Notice it didn't quite make it. It came up two or three ticks shy. And then what happened is it, is it rallied for the rest of the day. Um, so Mac will say that. He'll say, you know, that if it, it doesn't make the, the measured move, then a lot of times it'll take off in the other direction strongly. Um, so then I made a mistake here. <clears throat> um, and this is typical. Um, this is... This is a mistake I've made many times, uh, and the difference is this time I didn't allow it to go eight ticks against me. Um, I actually bailed, and I got a single tick right before it, it took off. 
Um, so, but I just sold blindly here. I was thinking that we had some support in here and then we had a breakout. And so I was preemptively thinking we were going to get a breakout pullback and then it would work lower. Um, I figured there's room to the lows here, but what I did wrong here is, first of all, I didn't wait for a setup. Um, and secondly, I was trading what I thought was going to happen rather than what was actually happening. Um, and so what was actually happening is you have this really bearish move in here. Nice two, two really nice bearish bars in a row. Um, and notice it can't go a single tick. It can't even make an equal low here. Uh, it just stops here and starts working higher. And then this bar opened here, traded lower, can't go a single tick lower. Uh, and then shot up here and closed a couple of ticks higher than the previous high. Um, so really where I was going short with the, just a, a, a blind sell order, um, I think that's a better place to go long based on this really bullish bar here and the fail break below this support area. This is a clear support area and you've had, you've had three good uh, bounces off of that support and so when this breakout fails um, I think that's a great place to go long and you can see how many traders got trapped right there that was probably one of the best trades of the day so you get a little channel working up you get a break and it moves to a new high um, this it's it's a first entry counting from the highs here, um, but it's also a second entry long, counting from the low. Notice first entry long, pull back, second entry long, and you still have some room to the highs here, quite a bit of room. So I don't think that's, a, that's a too terribly aggressive. And the other thing that happened is notice the high here, and you get a leg down, and it pulls back, and you get a second leg down, um, and then you get this nice bullish reversal bar uh, right off of the EMA, right off the midline of this little two-tier trading range. Um, and, and um, you know, there's, this is the first, all of this here is the first break of this channel, this up channel, which is, this is pretty clear. I mean, it's pretty clear what's going on here. This is bullish. This is a reversal pattern, so we're headed higher. Um, and even if this is the top of the range, which it, it, it was for a little while, um, there's still enough room to get a scalp there. So I was a little bit disappointed that I missed out on that trade. I had plenty of opportunity because it ticked higher. It ticked higher and then it, it bounced around in here for a little bit. Um, and I was really close to going long, but I didn't want to take that, that uh, first century long. Uh, and so, again, channel working up, we get a break, a little two-legged correction, and it moves up to a new high and runs right into this uh, resistance here again. Uh, it starts working down, and you get a little uh, you get a little channel working down, a break, and I got a little bit, uh, I jumped the gun a little bit right here. Um, I was counting from the high first century short. Pull back, second entry short. It's a nice, fairly nice bearish bar, um, and it ticked lower one tick, and then I used the limit order to go short, um, and and just got trapped right there. Uh, I could have survived if I'd had my stop one tick above that high, um, but that would have been 17. 19 and a half. I, I'm not, I didn't want to, I didn't feel comfortable with a 10 tick um, stop loss, even though it would have worked. Um, so I just had my stop one tick above this high. Uh, and you can see I got stopped out. And then I just got right back in because look at, look at the channel working down and it makes a new low. Pull back first entry, pull back second entry short. And it's a double, there's a double top here and it's one more test of that high. Um, and it's a nice bearish reversal bar, and it's an opportunity to go short above the EMA on a range day. Uh, so I took that, and I took a seven tick scalp on that. 
So anyway, yeah, so I like that for a, a second entry short. Um, again, it's right from the top of this trading range here. And I, I really expected prices to head all the way down um, to the to the lows of this trading range. Um, but when when it started to hesitate in here near these lows, um, I just got out. I, I wanted to I wanted to have a big trade. Um, especially after that six tick loss right in there. Um, so, I, but I ended up just taking seven ticks. You can see, obviously, I, I could have gotten a lot more, but uh, I was I was satisfied to kind of make up for that mistake of, of jumping in here too early. Now, <clears throat> again, you have this crimson channel here and you can see it fits really well along those highs um, and it's a little questionable over here because obviously it, it did close outside the channel um, but you know I think it's uh, it's close enough um, it doesn't and that's something that I have to uh, work on sometimes is, is not expecting things to be absolutely perfect um, but and I did I'll tell you I, I I was feeling bullish after this this bar right here because look look what happened it went lower here by a single tick and uh, and then it it uh, broke out the high um, and closed a single tick above um, so I thought that was really bullish and I remember feeling like yeah, maybe I should get long in here but Look at this uh, this trend line, and you know, depending on where you draw it, or, or no matter where you draw it, um, it doesn't it doesn't have a break until right here. So this is the first break of this little trend coming down here, um, and I could argue that we had a channel working down here, and this is our break, and this is a new low. And that makes sense as well. Um, it's a little bit hokey because it made an equal high here, so it's like almost starting over right here. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'm not really sure, and that's why I marked it in green. It was just a super bullish candle. Um, but you know, sometimes I, I've been fooled by those in the past, um, where you know I got a really bullish candle or a really bearish candle, and I trade made a trade based on that alone, and didn't take the bigger picture into into consideration, and ended up getting tricked. Uh, so, <clears throat> so I'll I'll leave that marked in green. Uh, but then we have a nice clear channel working up, and we get a break here. This was this was a little tricky, and I'm sorry for the all the lines and stuff. Because I was looking at this channel for a little while. Notice how all those highs line up. Um, and notice how these, these first two lows line up on that trend line there. Um, and even the midline. Look how the midline comes into play here. Um, so I, I think I wasn't the only one that was watching that channel. Um, but again, you have another reversal pattern here. And it finally breaks out higher above this trading range. And I really thought this, this would just be a failed break higher and it would work back down into the trading range, which it did. It just was really short-lived. Um, so I went ahead and marked this trade. Notice the high here. You get a first entry short. You will pull back here and there's a second entry short. Um, and so I think, you know, based on the fact that it's a fairly bearish bar, it's a second entry short, it's an opportunity to go short above the EMA uh, on what has been a pretty clear range day. And and this is fairly common as well. If you have a trading range, you get a fail. I mean, we had a failed break lower. Why not have a failed break higher? Um, and so I marked that as a short. It would have worked. Um, wouldn't have been good for much more than a four or five tick scalp. But it definitely would have been good. Um, and then you can see I started watching this channel. Um, and I did have to leave. I had uh, an appointment with my daughter. Um, so I left right before this trade triggered. Um, but 
And this is a little bit tricky. It's it's a uh, it's not a failed second entry. Anything. Uh, it's not. I guess it's. I guess you can. It's a. It is a second entry long counting from this low. Um, and that, I don't think that's too far fetched because if you drew this line here along those highs, that fits really nicely. And then look at how all the support in here coming from that trend line. Um, so it's just kind of like here's an uptrend, and then and this happens sometimes. We had an uptrend. And then the uptrend just accelerated and started started going up on a steeper uh, angle. Um, and so it's a second entry long, counting from the low. But what I really like most about it is is the way it was a, a trap. Um, this is a really bearish bar, and uh, it goes one tick lower, and then it finally fails in here. It's not the most bullish bar right in here. It's definitely a doji, but um, you know, when you, when you have a trap like that, um, you know, I don't, you don't have to be as picky about the signal bar. Um, so I like that. And I, and I left right before that trade actually even triggered. Um, so, so I definitely missed that. Um, and it starts working higher. And I think this channel is legit. Um, get a nice reaction off of the trend line here. Uh, this and this is a great setup. <laughs> and this happened right before I got back. I got back and started watching again at at 10:50, right as as uh, this bar was forming, and so I missed this second entry long as well. But that's a, that's a pretty clear, good, nice uh, setup. You have a new high, pullback first entry, pullback second entry right there. It's a fairly bullish bar. Um, and so you can go along just right above that bar um, and obviously it took a while but notice as well that it's a it's kind of a no the repeat pattern comes here never mind disregard um, but it is kind of a trap notice the low here first entry short pull back second entry short um, and then it fails right there and it does take it a minute but then it takes off um, so I like that, and it's also right off the trend line, right off the EMA, you know, sort of a classic second entry long setup there, and it turns out to be a really nice trade. I marked this trade as well in green. Um, it's kind of, it's just another trap, and, you know, depending on where you count, where you start counting, you could call this a second entry short. This is a double bottom here, so if you count from here, first entry, pull back, second entry short. But just in essence, it's a trap. It's a nice bearish bar in an uptrend. It only goes two ticks lower, and then it eventually fails. And this one, if you had used a stop to enter, right as you know, as soon as it failed, which I was thinking about doing that, but I, I ultimately felt felt a little nervous about going long two ticks below the absolute high of the day at that point. Um, so, and that's why I marked it in green. But if you had gone if you use a buy stop to go long right there at 28 even, you would have got just enough. Notice 29 and a quarter right there, uh, so you get your four tick scalp. Um, I just like you know those trades work tend to work out. Um, you know this is this is traders trying to pick a top, picking this up move is over, um, but we know there's been no break of the trend line, um, so this is an uptrend. Um, so you know, it's it's hardly ever safe to go short in an uptrend, and the, the the tastier it looks, the you know the more likely you are to get burned. And that looks like a really nice setup. I even made a comment in our Skype group. I was like, wow, that's a you know I know it's counter trend, but man, that looks like a great place to go short. <laughs> and uh, you know, so once it fails, boom, you get your scalp and look for the next setup. Now here we get a almost identical repeat pattern to right over here. Notice the new high, first uh, pull, uh, pull back first entry long, pull back second entry long, and it's again, look at the little two bar, the two move trap here. There's another two move trap, so here's the low, first entry short, pull back second entry short, boom, it takes off. Um, I took a trade in here based off of one of our um, 
I took a trade based off of one of the guys, uh, one of the traders in our Skype group. Um, basically, he just said, I'm going long. <laughs> and so I just jumped on. But notice what time it was. It was nearly noon. Um, and so I got really kind of nervous about taking a trade right there. Um, obviously, worked out to be a beautiful trade. Um, and but you know it being so late in the day and already being up 106 bucks on the day um, I I was really nervous about trying to let that go much further so I just took two ticks um, but yeah I really like that trade and in hindsight you know I'm wishing I had just let it run but hey I mean I didn't want to turn 106 dollars of profit into three dollars of profit and suddenly you know I've had a I've had a crappy day um, so so I just took my two ticks and called it a day at that point um, so I did finish with about 128 bucks in profit today um, five wins one one loss and uh, continuing to kind of make my way here on the combine So, yeah, that is it for me. Um, the combine, I'm still in the black. Um, hoping to hit my $11,000 goal here, uh, hopefully by the end of the year, before the 1st of January. So, all right, well, that's it for me. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I will uh, chat with you guys tomorrow.